Good morning and welcome to St. James as we gather for the second last Sunday in the church calendar year. Yes, the church works on a different time than just the regular society around us. And, well, there's a madness to the method because as we think about our life in Christ, it should be something that leads us out of, you know, daily, everyday life. Not that it doesn't apply there, but, but that our lives in Christ are something that lead us into eternity. So, of course, things in church are going to be a little bit different. And the church calendar year is going to be something that, you know, teases us out of our our day-to-day -day obsession with what's going on this week into considering what it is that Christ has done, what he has promised. And in this case, as we come close to the end of the church here, where we consider that our Lord has promised that he will return, that we listen to the words as well that he gives us. So that as we prepare, we prepare with faith, with hope, and live that in that Christian love day by day. I invite you, um, as you gather with us, to pull up the bulletin insert, those of you who are on our email list, and we'll make use of the readings and the intro there. And then, again, if you have a copy of the Lutheran Service Book um, or another you know, hymn book and hymn collection, we're going to use hymn 713, From God Can Nothing Move Me. Um, and we'll join in singing verses 1, 2, 3, and 4 of that hymn as we, as we um, consider that, that you know, call to endure to the end as we hear it in our gospel reading. But as we start, let's turn our attention to our Lord in prayer with our, our psalm text. The one who endures to the end will be saved. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Walk about Zion. Go about her. Number her towers. Consider well her ramparts. Go through her citadels that you may tell the next generation that this is our God, our God forever and ever. He will guide us forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The one who endures to the end will be saved. And we pray. O Lord, by your bountiful goodness, release us from the bonds of our sins, which by reason of our weakness we have brought upon ourselves, that we may stand firm until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, this second last Sunday in the church here, we turn our attention to our gospel reading from Mark chapter 13. We listen to these words. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of the disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when these things will be, and what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished. And Jesus began to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars, when rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines, and these are but the beginning of the birth pains. But be on your guard, for they will deliver you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them. And the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. And when they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say whatever is given to you in that hour, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Wars and rumors of wars and then, well, persecution of the church and even families fighting against one another so that 
people who hold on to scripture and that basic message of what is there in the scriptures are turned over to and canceled because of their faith and, and treated as though they are the worst things in sliced bread. Sounds like a lot of what, what we're going through in our world here today. Not to mention the way in which you'll have people that will go on and say, well, I'm the new Christ and I'm the new one that you're supposed to follow. And, and they'll say that they're the ones that have the latest message about this is what you got to do in order to get into heaven. Oh, we've been dealing with that for generations now and as we hear this it isn't so much for us to look at that and laugh and say well yeah well see God's word isn't true Jesus is pointing out that these things will happen but but the end will come when the end comes as we hear these things well it's very easy for us and perhaps a necessary thing in our day for us to say you know could this be the end and as a preacher, I can't say absolutely that Jesus is going to come because he never tells us when that exact end day will be. So if you've got groups that say, well, he'll come back on October 43rd, you know, 43rd, okay, picking a number that is obviously an absurd number out of the air. The point for that is, is to illustrate that, you know, we are not given that time. <coughs> Simply that call to be ready and that call to endure. And not in the sense where Jesus is telling us these things in order to frighten us the way that some of these preachers will go on. But in order for us to hold on to that which we already have. That promise that in Christ, by his death and resurrection, we have the perfect forgiveness of our sins. And not only on the cross so many years ago so that we wonder how do we grab a hold of it, but through the very means that Jesus has said, through baptism and then through that word of forgiveness that he's given to the church, the pastors of the church, to announce and speak actual words of forgiveness, to forgive sins in his name. And then, yes, of course, you know, the Holy Supper of our Lord where he says, here I am for you. We can build on these things even now. And what we forget in so many of these end time, you know, kind of movements within the church or the way that Hollywood picks it up, you know, or secular society, the world is ending because of climate change. Well, yeah, the climate will change. The climate has always changed. But the way in which they work on developing this kind of a weird swing between fear and rage always keep us running back and forth between those two rather than standing in the middle of whatever is happening in the world whether the earth is shaking and wars and rumors of wars are all around to lift up our eyes to heaven to the one who has promised that not only he is lord of all that he has done everything for us and our, our salvation so that we put our trust in him but also then to listen to the scriptures from beginning to end to realize that he puts an end to wars when the time is right, in the same way that he has promised that everything in this world, well, will be wrapped up, and we'll get to hear that next week in our gospel reading as well, so that he will come again. Where this call for us is, is to live in the present with faith. Endure to the end, as he has it at the end of our reading, so that we hold on to him, rather than allowing all of these things to knock us off our feet with all these different kinds of preachers that will go on about this, that, and the other thing. And how do you got to be ready rather than realizing that it's Christ who makes us ready through his word and in the sacraments so that as we hold on to him, we already live that life where we are rooted in eternity through something as simple as eating and drinking the body and blood of Christ here by putting on our baptism every morning where we've been joined to him, where we've died with him, where we're joined with him in his resurrection, so that when he comes again, we're already there in him because of what he has done and given to us. It's living that faith with confidence in the present. That's what that enduring looks like, so that we're not led astray by the worries and the fears and the anxieties of all the stuff that's going on around us. Certainly being responsible in how we live, of course we are supposed to be responsible, but that we build our lives always with that hope that comes in Christ Jesus, with that faith that looks to him as the one 
who has not only promised that he would be with us to the very end of the age, that baptismal promise, but the one that also promises that he will hold us through no matter what will happen in the world, no matter how much the world and society rages, how much people try to insult the church and, well, call, tear us down because we believe in that Jesus. Yeah. And true, we people in the church continue to stumble. We're not a club of the perfect. Okay? And that's the part of the reality. That's why we come to church confessing our sins. Don't let the world tear you down because we discover that there's problems that happen even within the church. So that there aren't problems that happen outside. Not that we should encourage those problems to continue either same time as we hear this the call of our Savior is to come and have our sins washed and forgiven today today by that gift that he gives us today so that no matter how much the world turns upside down or people persecute the Christian church which, as we listen to that, it's not me being, oh, be frightened, be afraid, be very afraid. The reality is, is that the Christian church, and this is the part that doesn't get trumpeted in the world because the world is not really interested in it, is that, you know, through various agencies, is the most persecuted faith community in the world. Throughout the Middle East, throughout Africa, throughout India, throughout Pakistan, throughout Buddhist countries, throughout you know, communist-led com com countries, and well, you can even see it within the Western world, where the Western world prefers to have a Christianity that doesn't talk about Christian things, but simply says the things that you know society wants to hear from us today. It's not the faith that the early church was persecuted for, or that the disciples were killed for. It's not the best life ever kind of messaging that you get from various TV evangelists either. It's a faith which builds on the reality that in a broken world, the only hope we have is our Savior, Jesus Christ, who forgives us. And that forgiveness so that no matter how much you know, we face persecution, that Christ alone is that hope that gift and that foundation for not only today but also for that time when he returns so that no matter what we hear not to be led astray by this preacher or that not to be led astray by whatever social and cultural movement that wants to tear down the church or that not to be frightened out of our faith so that we go chasing after this project or this project because of wars, rumors of wars, of natural disasters and all these sorts of things, or even give up on our faith when we have people that, well, pull us on the carpet and say, you actually believe that? What's wrong with you? But that we hold on and endure to the end is that message of the return of Christ is a message of hope. As Jesus, not only this week, but again next week, we will hear about. Because no matter what happens, he has already determined the victory in the end by his resurrection from the dead. And he holds us in that through his word and the sacraments. So hold on to Christ in the places that he holds on to us. Build on him so that no matter what we see or hear, that we can lift up our eyes to him, to our Lord who was crucified, who rose from the dead, who holds us by the waters of baptism in that gift and has promised that no matter what, as we heard today, hold us and give us his Holy Spirit to say what is necessary whenever we need to say that so that we hold on to him and endure to the end. May the Lord bless us with a strong faith 
May he comfort us in the midst of a world that does seem to be showing all of these signs of the end of the world, so that rather than being frightened by what might be, or what whatever preacher might want to frighten us into following whatever program they have in mind, that instead of going and being led astray, we stand simply firmly in what Christ has done and given, and how he holds us with the promise that we will be saved. Let's join in our prayers. Lord, Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you that through your word you prepare our hearts not only for the beautiful message of salvation in Christ, but then also even during those times when the world turns upside down and turns against us. Help us not to be led astray by all kinds of false preachers that depart from your word and build on visions and dreams and you know whatever they claim would be the latest and greatest thing that they seem to have found but instead to hold on to that simple message of the cross, of the death and resurrection of Christ, as each of the apostles taught. Bless us so that we would be able to endure to the end within that faith, not neglecting coming to church and building upon that foundation of your word in the sacraments, even as we heard, to, even as our reading from, from the book of Hebrews for today reminds us, but instead encourage one another to love and good works so that we would always be found in you, building upon that foundation where Christ, you yourself is, have taught that you come to us in order to feed us and nourish us and hold us within your grace. All these prayers, we bring them before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As always, we pray for peace in the world, both in war-torn areas so that the guns of war would be stopped and that the lives of people would be preserved, but also especially that even in those war-torn areas, whether it's in the Middle East or in the Ukraine or throughout Africa or throughout areas where conflicts arise and persecution of your church emerges in India and in Pakistan and in Muslim countries and in, in communist countries where people in positions of authority try to silence that message of your word that you would allow that opportunity for the witness of your church to be strong. We pray that for that same strength within our own country and nation and our Western world as well, where far too many movements throughout universities and public schools aim to silence the voice of the gospel throughout our society. Give us courage to be able to bear witness in that love and that hope that we have in Christ Jesus, not with, with antagonism in our hearts, but with that hope and that love so that we would learn to love even our enemies and the enemies of your church, so that through that message you would spark that gift of faith, that message of Christ and that word of Christ, and then lead others, many others, into the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray also for all those who are undergoing surgery, recovering from surgeries, all those who are wrestling and struggling with grief, where grief is persistent, for all those who struggle with mental health concerns as well, so that you would help us to recognize that even the thoughts and the worries of our hearts are not the ultimate in the end, but instead to turn our eyes to you in all circumstances so that our lives would be founded upon Christ our cornerstone. Bless us with that strong faith and encourage us as well to recognize those among us who are struggling in that kind of a way so that we would be that, that external support to always ground them back into that love of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for our youth, for those who are in Sunday school, those in confirmation instruction, those who are going through adult instruction, for each and every one of us. Grant us that strong faith so that drawn by your word and by your spirit, we would always find our hope in you. All these prayers and all the other petitions of our hearts, that we bring them before you, trusting in your great mercy through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
And as mentioned before, let's turn to our hymn 713 in our Lutheran service book, or if you have another hymn book, From God Can Nothing Move Me, and we'll join in singing verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. From God can nothing move me, he will not step aside, but gently will reprove me and be my constant guide. He stretches out his hand in evening and in morning, my life with grace adorning wherever I may stand. When those whom I regarded as trustworthy and sure have long from me departed, God's grace shall still endure. He rescues me from sin and breaks the chains that bind me. I leave death's fear behind me, his peace I have within. The Lord my life arranges, who can his work destroy. In his good time he changes all sorrow into joy. So let me then be still, my body, soul, and spirit, his tender care inherit according to his will. Each day at his good pleasure, God's gracious will is done. He sent his greatest treasure in Jesus Christ, his Son. He every gift imparts, the bread of earth and heaven are by his kindness given. Praise him with thankful hearts. And the Lord bless you keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.